some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Kat and I are doing a discussion for Sagrada Artisans. We just finished the entire campaign, uh, so take that for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so this was this was a game that was announced that, of course, like any previously done game uh, that now has a legacy version, it typically spawns like a ugh kind of thing, just because, I mean, there was Pandemic Legacy that blew the doors wide open mm -hmm. on how amazing those games were, and then other companies started doing it where it was either hit or miss. Um, and it became less special. It did, yeah. With the legacy aspect, they've definitely slowed down. Uh, because now, for the most part, with the legacy campaign, it's like, okay, once you're done, now you have a new, unique game to play. Versus, while well, you're done, throw it away. Right. So, um, I mean, there's been this one. There's been Clank Legacy. There's been Machikora Legacy. There's been... Uh, <sighs> there was a... Anyway... There's, yeah, there's, there's a bunch, there's, there's there's a a bunch, bunch. of legacy games out there. So, as someone who loves Sagrada and all the expansions that it brought, I was actually kind of excited for this one. And I'm happy to report that... I hate it. <laughs> that <laughs> I hate this game. No, uh, I had a good time with it. Yes. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Me too. Uh, they... I will try and be as spoiler-free as possible, at least on the big things. I mean, um, but in terms of, we'll probably talk about the story beats and uh, the ten games overall yeah. versus anything that's, like, major about the game. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, and I have some actually weird feelings about this one mm -hmm. at the end of the day, but I think if you love Sagrada, you're going to have a great time with this. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you think? Um, I, I mean, I pretty much agree. Like, it has its flaws and things that I would probably... I don't know if I would know how to change them, but just things that could have been done differently, perhaps. Um, but overall, I liked it. Like, I enjoyed my time. It was basically just me and my husband coloring and talking and rolling dice. Like, it was yeah. just a really nice time, and we were listening to music, like, thematic music. We started off with, like, choral... Like yeah, like whatever melody. Eighteen hundred. Yeah. Then we moved on to like bramble. Yeah, bramble which is music. just a vibe anyway. But like, it was just a fun time. Um, yeah. We played it two games at a time, typically, except for this very last one. Yep. Um. But I think if we had paced it out a little more, like if we weren't wanting to do a review so soon, it's just a nice light game. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. It's just fun. It's, it's just nice. Yeah, that's one of the positives of it is you it's so easy to set up. Yeah. Like it's like, oh time to go set up the legacy game. Oh, okay, pop this out, pop that out, pop that main board, and you're pretty much done. Yeah. It's like four pieces, uh, because the dice are already in the bag. You don't have to shuffle the um like the window boards, you don't have to pick out the dice, you don't have to add a bunch of expansions. It's extremely sufficient to mm -hmm. just get into a game. So it's easy to do two also, at like, a time. Also, like, and with these legacy games, normally you have, like, your own, like, personal box or whatever. It's, yeah. it's right inside your um, little book. Yeah, your your own your legacy book. Yeah. Or your journal. Yeah, your, your uh, uh, legacy journal. So they did a really nice job of not bloating the game, because I know that's what the problem was with a lot of early legacy games, was it was just fucking bloat. Right. And it's like... And for what they did with, like, stickers, because there's stickers in the game, it's like... It's just so simple. Like, it's like, hey, open this on... And, like, whenever you get all the envelopes, you're thinking, oh my god. But it's not that bad at all. And... That's what I enjoyed. Because Clank Legacy was... Uh, it was like it, it had like a sticker book it was just non-stop with stickers and no one likes stickers <laughs> right well especially because like you don't want to just throw it down because if you can if you can just slap it on and then move on and it's like misaligned and you're a maniac yeah so like you want to get it perfect and it takes it's finicky like yeah. to the point that you're like i don't know if i have like the mental yeah capacity to want to yeah. do that i mean if you look at that it looks pretty Yes, like, yeah. It's like a, a quick glance. You're like, oh, that's nice. Uh, 
and they did a good job of like they didn't really they didn't really like change the wheel on Sagrada like if you've played original Sagrada then you're going to be extremely familiar with this yeah they also didn't overload you with rules like, yes. Oh, by the way, like you, like some legacy games, you open up and it's just like blank of nothing, and it's just like, okay, now you get the, <laughs> now you get the customizable die. Yeah. Uh, it's four die pieces you have to <laughs> intri uh, intrinsically put together. Yeah. It's like, oh dear God. Uh, it's like, because everybody's had that job in that manager where it's like, okay, you're doing your job, you know your duties, and then all of a sudden they're like, we're going to do it this way. And then like yeah. a month later it's like, well, now we're doing things this way. Yeah. And it's like, what way do we want to do it? Exactly. <laughs> so that is probably my biggest praise is is that you do get the legacy experience mm -hmm. um, in a nice, succinct, manageable thing. Because they could have been like 20 games of this, and it would have gotten old. Yeah. It would have gotten annoying. 10 games of Beautiful. Sagrada Artisans is like... It's like, I feel fulfilled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, that I'm done. It's like, I'm not upset that I'm done because it didn't end too early, but I'm also not pissed off that it keeps going. Right, and I would say that this is like a really good rainy day, snowy day... Spend time yeah. with the people you want to game. Um, you got this at Gen Con. No, I didn't. You got this in the mail. <laughs> yes. You showed it to me. Then you went to Gen Con. Yes. Then I, we played it I, when you got I, back. <laughs> I, saw, I talked it up to my friend uh, Keith, who's in my O Sworn and Isofarian Guard series, and he bought it for him and his wife to play. And they're going to love it. I yeah. can tell. But, like, it's just really nice. It's like he, you, went away to Gen Con, had your little fun, came what? back. <laughs> well, <laughs> had your little Gen Con moment. And then we got to just play this, and it was just nice quality time, and I think that's what I like so much about it. Yeah. Uh, now, it's kind of a hard sell. Like, I, I had a friend, or I told a friend that I got it. He's like, oh, what do you think? And I was like, do you like coloring? He's like, eh. Mm. I'm like, well, then yes. probably stay away from it. And what's so funny is I was telling the girls at work at, about this. Like, I only work with, like, two other guys for reference but i was telling the girls about it and all of them were like that sounds so fun so like yeah. well so yeah exactly so if you don't like coloring yeah uh you're you're not gonna like this yeah because the way i told them i was like it's roll dice count your number like pay attention it's, it's to your numbers book. and you color yeah like <laughs> and they did a really cool job with the person who was demoing it i i at gen con i don't i didn't catch his name um but whenever he was talking it up i guess him and his husband his husband does like some uh, like uh, therapy or something. Oh, they yeah. use this game and they use uh, Fog of Fog of Love as well. Uh, but he specifically sold this up as like when people are taking their turns, they actually put stuff like decorations around the the, the actual border. game yeah. for people who don't suffer from analysis paralysis or anything like that that they can color. Yeah. If you're gonna have people who are like, I need to like figure out how because it's Sagrada's a puzzle game. Like, where do I need to put this die? How am I going to maximize the public objectives as well as my own personal objectives? They actively put decorations for others to color yeah. um, while they're waiting for that person to do it. Yeah. And it has no bearings on gameplay or anything. I think that's brilliant. I think that gives them something to do. It keeps them off their phone so they're not like, are you done? Uh, right. Which they might still do, but it's like, yeah. oh, well, now... Because you, I think, colored every single page. Every single one. I made it a point. I did not. Yeah. I did not. I, I wanted mine to... And I did that for a reason, because it's like, yeah, I could color while you're thinking, but I was like, no, I kind of want the focal point to be the window, so I like the black and white around the actual color. I love, like, a stained glass cathedral so like i couldn't i couldn't help myself like i think this is the this is looks I, worse because you didn't finish it well here's the thing is you don't finish it it's just clear spots in the glass like yeah i guess that's true i guess uh clear is is clear a color <laughs> white is <laughs> <laughs> let's not get into that. um and and here's the other thing so well actually while we're on the topic of coloring yes that's that's a cool thing, but I also find it to be kind of a negative at the same time, because in original Sagrada, you're drafting dice. You still yes. have the dice, but you don't, like, I guess, the, like, you're supposed to take them and place them on the spot of where you're going to put it. Yeah. Which is a little chunky. I don't do that. I yeah. Like, we didn't do that. Uh, but you have to use, like, a black colored pencil to actually write in the number, and then the uh, colored pencil to color it in. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that can actually become very annoying, especially in late. <coughs> I'm dying. <laughs> in later windows, when you're like starting to write or color, and you're like, "Oh fuck, I can't go there." In original Sagrada, I mean, if you unless you play with strict people, that's like, "No, you placed it there." Yeah, chess rules. Yeah, where it's like, you're difficult to be around. <laughs> uh, it it can be kind of annoying whenever it's like. You, you could have put it somewhere else, but you already started coloring, and there's no taking that back because mm -hmm. there's no way of coloring over a color that's already there. Yeah. And we don't have those erasable colored pencils that don't work. Uh, no, but we do have colored pencils that don't work. This is another... <laughs> yeah, that's honestly what I thought you were going to bring up. Uh, I certainly am, because I'm keeping on the color theme. Yep. But yeah, so that could be kind of annoying if you make a mistake. You kind of have to live with your mistake, yeah. uh, which in Sagrada can completely derail a window. Yeah when it didn't have to be like that. When you, all you can do in regular Scrawl would be like, oh, that, that can't go there. I'll, pu I'll put it here. Right. Or like also you have to live with your mistake. And if you're like me, I play games to not have to live with my mistakes. I already live with those daily. Yeah. <laughs> so. But I mean, like there are times where like you would start coloring or starting in a different spot whenever yeah. you, you have to keep it. And, uh, and I adjacent. did do that. And I did that a couple times and I'm like, I'm... Yeah, and it's like, I don't, I don't care. Commitment, like... Yeah, I guess it should also be said, we only played this at two, but I think Sagrada is best at two. Um, because it's less people you have to fucking wait and be like, oh man, are you gonna... You gonna take take a die yet? That's true. I'm thinking of all my possible options. It's like, you just just take one. Uh, so yeah, that that's a little bit annoying, especially when the windows kind of become more and more... I mean, complex. yeah is if you really make a mistake, it's like, well, I guess I lost. Right. Um, now, still sticking on the color theme, these colored pencils are the worst colored pencils I think I've ever used. Like, like not even an exaggeration, I will agree. Like, It's almost like they, they, they're like the LaCroix of colored pencils. I don't even... <laughs> it's like they, they, they were, they colored adjacent. Half the time, well, first of all... Yeah. And this is going to be my only harsh negative, because in a game where you color and the colored pencils constantly are brittle or break or sometimes aren't even the color of what you're putting down. Yeah, or it's way too close to one of the colors. Yeah, it's this purple. It, yeah. the, the purple that you might be seeing on, on camera, this one, yeah. is not the color that it actually colors. Yeah, it shows the, up as like a light periwinkle weird yeah because it's not even close to like the purple that's like already printed on the sheet yes it doesn't even match that yeah so your purples are different they come off as like a mix of purple and blue mm -hmm. uh not saying that i don't think the purple and the blue are similar like mm -hmm. next to each other they are different um but it's kind of disjointing when you take a, this purple dye yeah and the purple colored pencil does not match mm -hmm. that it's like oh wait did i there were multiple times i grabbed the purple star color i'm like oh i grabbed the blue yeah and i don't know like that that is honestly like kind of true for like i would say every color except for yellow because yellow is just bright and so it's kind of hard to get a different yellow when you color but like a pre-filled in purple it will always be different from your colored purple a pre-filled in red vastly different than your colored in red yeah, but I only had the problem with the purples. I, I mean, I agree. Your green, it's just, that one, I will say, is just a little bit darker. Th yeah. You want to know why I think they did what they did? I do. I think, and I know this for a fact because the guy who was demoing it at Gen oh. Con and the dice uh, are designed in a way to help colorblind players. Okay. So, like, they have spots in, like, the blue and the red because, um, because I think that's, like, the... Uh, most people are blue red or blue or red green color blind uh -huh. so they should be able to tell the difference we, i actually have a friend who came with us to gen con who's color blind he was able to tell the difference so because the colors of or at least the pre-printed patterns are maybe like a faded or they have a slight pattern in it to hopefully help color blind players i don't know i'm okay. not color blind okay um so it's like those, that still kind of gets a pass. What really frust frustrates me about these is they break constantly. It's a quality issue, like yeah. 100%. Like these, I bought these years ago. Um, it's just an off-brand colored pencil. They they are like strong. Yeah. They color the way they're supposed these to color. These like bow 
so bad. They're like almost it's, rubbery. It's almost, it's almost wax is kind of how they are because like whenever you're using the black primarily to fill in circles and mm -hmm. like it's like the fattest line and you're like, oh, I'll use the really good uh, sharpener. Love the pencil sharpener. Yeah, the pencil sharpener is really good. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'll use this to... Uh, to, to sharpen, sharpen it. it. Oh, it's really sharp. Okay, perfect. And yeah. you go, you put a modicum of pressure and it breaks immediately. It crumbles. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, it's like yes. powder. Like, also, another thing that I have never liked is I don't like, I don't like using a coloring pencil over another coloring pencil. Like, I don't think yes. it's bold enough. So, even It worked for me because I would put the number first mm -hmm. and then color, but yeah. Yeah, I it just didn't like that. It feels weird, especially when you're using, like, the cathedral construction thing and you color that in, but then you're trying, like, oh, I used it, time to cross it out. Oh, I can't really see that right. I crossed it out. Because that's another thing. You mentioned it. You said that they're like wax. I think, speaking of wax, um, it's too waxy. It's of like a crayon. A yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a really excellent way to put it. It's too close to that texture Yeah. to keep adding color on top of it. Yeah. Because, like, I think I... I think I colored in one of these cards, um, a purple, mm -hmm. with, like, the base game's purple colored pencil. And then I colored over it again with, like, my purple. And, like, it started to, like, kind of, you saw all the buildup yeah. or something. So I'm just, it's a quality thing. And, yeah. like you've said, in a game where coloring is your That's literally objective. The, the only thing you do in this game is color. Yeah. So the fact that these are kind of ass colored pencils yeah. is very frustrating. Now, I mean, you might be like, well, that's not a big deal. I'll go to the dollar store. Just and get your own pencils. That's really what I would say is yeah. before you even start, go get a fine tip ballpoint pen. Yes. Because to put in your numbers and because you, you do a little bit of writing, mm -hmm. uh, really, if you just want to name your window, mm -hmm. uh, that's just going to make it way cleaner. Um, you like to be able to tell since it's permanent anyway, like getting a permanent pen it's like, okay, well, it doesn't matter because even if you use the black colored pencil, it's still permanent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it still do stands. that and also get legitimate color pencils. Like these, these suck and became increasingly more frustrating as yeah. the game went on. You, I think by the second game, completely started you you use this yeah i gave numbers. up i was like i don't want to write with the black I'm like, one i'm like nope i'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. keep trying I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the whole game that way and i did and it's not like the word the numbers are illegible yeah or the colors are illegible but it was like i wanted to actually look like i put the number there instead of some fat wad number <laughs> yes i agree that's my only negative. Yeah. Um, I mean, besides kind of the, if you make a mistake, you kind of have to just suck it up, which is a little bit annoying, but yeah. I don't make mistakes. That's true. Um, and, and the colored pencils. So, um, what did you think of the legacy aspects? You know... You dealt with them a lot more than I did. Um, I It is just every legacy game for me i am not a huge fan of constantly like when we finish a game i just sometimes i want to be done yeah. like i'm like okay we're, we're i'm in finish mode like we're done i don't like doing the end steps uh, and yeah. and mine were just i mean i lost every game <laughs> so i was constantly getting the second place reward which in a two-player game is i get two tools to choose from to add to my arsenal and mm -hmm. i get three coins and at first you're like that's great that's fantastic i can use these by like the third game i was like i don't care what i'm getting the three coins for yeah. i don't want to upgrade anything anymore like <laughs> it's yeah. not helping me it's just it was kind of a nuisance but i think that's just a personal thing i mean i think they all so yeah i mean you lost every game i wasn't gonna bring that up because it didn't matter i don't give a shit um <laughs> but the the scores were always close. I think except in one game. Maybe but, um yeah, maybe one game was actually like a blah, blah but for for the most but part But yeah, yeah, they were pretty I thought pretty. these were torn. <laughs> I was oh like, it's I'm I'm down here cutting everything up. Um Yeah, so it's like the scores were always close. So I think in terms of like their catch up mechanisms, um they did a pretty good job. It does help. I think yeah. it, if we had a third player I wouldn't have won every game. Uh, the the yeah. coins would have been different. Like like if we were playing with Brett, for example, Brett probably would have won a few games that mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, well, I got second, so now I'm going to get some coins. And then because 
each tool you bring is like a point. Yes. Uh, and if you increase your toolbox capacity, that could be just, uh, what is that, seven points mm -hmm. just to start the game, which, I mean, a lot of our games were ten point or less difference. Yeah, So it's not nothing. Going in with all those tools, and the fact that it's just going to absolutely help you by giving you a ton of uh, mitigation yeah. more than the first player gets. Because uh, the first player, who if they win a lot, they just have to kind of roll with, what the dice come out as, whereas the other player, like the last three or four games, I'm sitting here like, God, I need a two. Okay, there's a two. It's a yellow two. I can't place that yellow <laughs> two. Okay, what? Like, what, what can I? Can I? And you're just like, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna change it with this. I'm gonna use my tool. I'm gonna use my. I'm gonna use my special ability and then I'm gonna place it. And I'm over here like, <laughs> yeah. I need the orange die to come out. And there it is. And she took Thing, it. And yeah. she took it. Do you have to take that die? Right. Um, so I'm not really knocking the... I think I think they did a pretty good job of having the catch-up mechanism. Especially with the very end of scoring. Being like three different windows of like, oh, give it, get your color, um, you know, your family color a special ability. Uh, yeah. Get more tools. Uh, or just get legacy points. That's yeah. that's fine. Um, again, ten games I think is good, but it does start to feel a little samey. Like Absolutely. they did, they didn't yeah. really branch the wheel or or uh, whatever it's called uh, in terms of like legacy stuff. Yeah. Like it is just constant tools uh, that you get. You just only really get more options of tools. And and that was pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> like there which was you, yeah, there, there you, was sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> I was gonna say I was like I like that they didn't add again too much. I know we kind of hit on that earlier because sometimes some legacy games can just fill it with bloat. So at least there's that is all I was gonna say. Yeah. Um. I mean they do cool stuff that we're not gonna talk about because mm. that will really spoil it. Um. But. So, so it's not like completely wow. Why they, why they even make a legacy game? Mm -hmm. uh, the legacy aspects are are nice, and the other thing is like they did add some stuff that really gave you a lot of mitigation. Yes, they did. Like the biggest one is the cathedral construction thing, where it's like as the cathedral is being built. If you were the active player and, like, there's a die available that's of, of the next level, you get to, like, color in the spot. And now, when you draft, you can actually cross that out and turn whatever die you draft into that number and color. Mm. And for the most part, I wasn't using it a whole lot until the very end. Mm -hmm. Where I was like, uh, I, I, need, I need a specific die. So I started looking at what I had available. And as per usual... <laughs> What I had available isn't what I needed. Oh, of I course. think what you had available is what oh, I needed. So yeah. I'm like, and I'm just like, I'm not even gonna look at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, cool. Um, what, uh, what do you think of the uh, the different windows? Did you think? Did you like all the different puzzles? I did like all of them. Um, I don't think one stood out as like this is this just sucks. Like this window is bad because they're not like some of them were tougher and made you think a little harder yeah but none of them were like i just didn't have fun with that yeah like i think they they did a really good job of like it's it's basically like the first half is kind of like your regular sagrada what you would get from maybe some of the expansions yes and then the other half is like hey here's what's different about artisans mm -hmm. and i'm like and i like that yeah each one presented its own puzzle the first one was your traditional Sagrada, like, that you're familiar with. And then it kind of really just starts to be like, oh, oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and each one just kind of, I thought they kind of kept getting better and better. Agree. Uh, yeah. And more interesting. I mean, because, yeah, if it was just ten games of, like, cubes, you'd be yeah, like, ten games oh, of Sagrada. great. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so which one was your favorite? I think the dove was my favorite. Uh, yeah, number nine. I think the dove, or maybe... That one was cool. Oh, I did have one. Right like there. a dove. Like a dove. And I named mine the Peacemaker. I also liked the tree one. I thought the tree one was really pretty and kind of funky. Yeah. But yeah, I think the dove was fun to work around. 
I really liked I don't want to say number five. That one? Yeah. No, that's... The one with like you had to have like different numbers around cool. the numbers or yeah. different color what was it? Yeah, different values around the numbers and different colors around the colors. That one was a really huge challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of like baby steps you into like being very diligent and careful because yeah. like you can't just slap down whatever you want. So I like that. Yes, uh, but also it never felt like so restrictive. Like they didn't just get in complexity where it's like you need RNG to go your way. Yeah. Every single round, yeah. <laughs> you had you had room uh, to to be like I'm gonna start here, and most of the time it would work out. But then they also gave you mitigation mm -hmm. uh, through having a bunch of tools or the cathedrals or the innate tools of each window yeah. so it was like it was st it was like a perfect blend of of challenge while feeling like sagrada but also still feeling like its own sagrada artisans thing yeah i agree and i like this i like that you made the uh uh the i guess a pun but not necessarily it's like this is a legacy game but you are actually building your family's legacy yes. yeah i was like it honestly as a legacy game is quite literally perfect like, as like a thematic thing yeah. because <laughs> the story is about your about your family your family and like also just the legacy of sagrada because it's truly a masterpiece yeah and a lot of these are like a lot of these cathedrals are artwork and expression yeah so you go through like four ages you name like the person who's supposed to be building at that given point in time and um you also get to name all your windows, whatever you want, and keep a little legacy family tree of when they were done. Uh, it's nice. It's nice to look back and be like, oh, yeah. Like, looking through all these different windows, just seeing uh, them complete. Yeah, it's satisfying. It is satisfying. Uh, so now here's, here's where it gets weird for me. Mm -hmm. So the game can be played once you're done. Like, there are booster packs. That's not a spoiler. It's not, like, part of the secret legacy game. <laughs> they have booster packs uh, and rules on how you utilize them. Okay. So, like, you can... I mean, like, there's mm. these and then it's all, like, just different. So, and what's really cool is because they have ones in here that are sp uh, specifically from the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you supposed to make a copy? Well, uh... I think you give everyone a different window. Oh. Play on Would be mind. my guess. But it also tells you, hey, use the public objectives from Window 5 for this one, because that was in Window 5. So you can redo it if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, and then they have some that are just completely different. Like, hey, S. For, for Seth. Seth. <laughs> for, for silly Seth. Um, here's the thing. I don't see any reason, now that I'm done with the campaign, for me to ever play this instead of Sagrada. I think it goes with the only other reason that there would be, and it's if you just do not have a lot of games. I think it's either that, or if you don't have original Sagrada. So I have original Sagrada with all the expansions. Okay, yeah. Um, that it's like, well, that is just going to be, like, cleaner to play. Because yeah. it is just taking dice, rolling them, and then assigning them as you want, and then you're like, okay, we're done, and yeah. you put it all up. Less bust, yeah. Uh, unless you really like coloring, which, I mean, I don't mind coloring. I, I had a good time every time I was doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, just, but that's kind it. of the weird... Yeah, I just, I just kind of... I, I actually hate it. Uh, that's kind of where Thanks. I'm kind of hung up, because it's like I, I'm praising the game, and I think it's a, a wonderful and, and nice legacy game. Mm -hmm. Definitely worth going out and, and getting uh, or giving it a shot. But I don't really have any interest in the booster packs. I get it, yeah. Um, I have all three of them, too. Like, the other ones upstairs actually bought extras on accident. <laughs> um, not really I mean, it, it is nice, that because whenever I was flipping through this, I was seeing all the ones that we did, and I'm like, oh, really? Is it just... Oh, is it just redos oh, of this one? I see. But it is nice that it's not. I like like that one's that one's really cool. That's a Halloween theme. I think one. I think that one's adorable. Um, I can see why you aren't like so interested in it because we did just play ten games of yeah. this. Um, oh, it's a Sagrada logo. <laughs> but also, it's one of those things where it's like, fuck it again. Like we don't have anything to do. The power went out again, and so yeah. and sure, there's, there's a lighthouse. Oh. So it's like, I mean, maybe I'm going back away because it's like I'm seeing these, like these just different 
Oh, they have like a uh, different name, Starry Night, Aww. Honey Bee. Aww. Uh, to color, but it's also at the same time, they're not, it's like, is everyone supposed to get their own? That's what I don't get, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are rules, which I haven't officially read, so oh, I guess I yeah. can't say a whole lot, but it's like, does everyone just get their own that they're trying to do, mm -hmm. their own window that they're completing, or is everyone trying to do the same one? And then you have to kind of get public objectives that you have to pull from somewhere yeah. to fill in. It's, it's just, the coloring was nice for doing the campaign because it was all succinct, but going out of your way to play this and do the coloring when you, when I do have the original game, that would be just this. Yeah. Like you okay, have. Okay, slot. <laughs> slot. Got it. <laughs> I would say you have, you'd have to be like an uber fan to do that, but you have the original game. I've got a coloring book upstairs. Like we're kind of covered yeah. on that base. Yeah. So I guess I guess if you're going to continue, they do have booster packs. They have three of them uh, that do provide, I mean, a ton of replayability. Like, how many are in here? Does it say 48 double-sided? So 96, 96 different patterns just in the booster pack one. Um, and there's three of them. So there is a ton of replayability if you are really enjoying the coloring and it's like a nice family thing. Uh, but mm -hmm. I guess if you already have original Sagrada, then I guess that's a call you have to make. Me yeah. personally, it's like if I want to play Sagrada and do the, get the puzzle aspect of everything that this brought, it's like, well, I can just set that up. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I definitely agree. Uh, yeah, so without going into any further spoilers, uh, do you have anything else? I, I don't think I do. Like, as you can tell, I obviously very much enjoy the coloring aspect of mm -hmm. it. Um, cause my mind does roam when we play games. I don't think anybody would deny that, but I don't think I have anything else. Well, great. Uh, so on, on a scale of, uh, one to 10, what would you give, what would you give, uh, Sagrada Artisans? Um, I'm going to give it <coughs> a nine. Nine? A very liberal nine because I truly enjoyed my time. Like I think, I thought it was, I had a lot of fun. I think, um, the quality of time matters a lot to me and it's easy and there's not a lot of like stuffing in it it's not fluff like it's just to the point i like it yeah other than the colored pencils i mean that's just kind of a silly decision on yeah i don't know what happened maybe yeah. it, maybe it's like our copy just happened to have shitty colored pencils could be it also might not have been their first choice of colored pencil and something happened you never know um but i'm gonna give it a nine yeah uh cool i figured it would be it would be that high yeah um so i'm actually going to give it the same ranking that i give regular sagrana uh which is an eight okay um while i liked the the legacy aspect of it uh i thought as a legacy version of their original game uh they did a really good job um it still felt like sagrana to me so it it, it didn't it wasn't like pandemic to pandemic legacy different mm -hmm. like because the story here is is kind of whatever uh, yeah i like, did not care about yeah, the story it was like it was there uh it it was nice that it was there but it wasn't like groundbreaking storytelling right um so i mean and whenever you get to look back on your thing and be like oh yeah that's nice i remember that one mm -hmm. that is that is all nice but that is also kind of the same feeling i get when i play regular sagrana yeah. so i still think uh, I'm gonna give this an eight out of ten. Not bad though. Not bad. Not at all. Not at all. So yeah, that's uh, that's it, everyone. That's our thoughts on Sagrada Artisans. Let us know what you think of the game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.